Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Hager number RCBB1741, 3.5, 3 This is a uh, residential grade ball bearing radius corner hinge shown in a US 15 satin nickel finish. That's what the hinge looks like. This is an RCBB1741. RC stands for radiused corner. On this hinge, this radiused corner is quarter inch. How that's achieved is when the factory is manufacturing the wood door and the wood frame, they're using a router or some machinery that's going to uh, incorporate a two flute carbide half inch diameter router bit. Well, when you use that tool and go back to that corner and you don't square it out, you're left with a quarter inch radius and that's why people will buy these. Um, you're either a door supplier and you're a supplying quarter inch radius to save you the trouble and the additional work of going back and squaring the corners or maybe you're a homeowner and just says, yeah, I, I need to replace this. Um, so you're looking for a you know, a, 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 an equal match, and that would be a quarter-inch radius corner. The BB in this part number stands for ball bearing. There are two bearing packets in here. Ball bearing hinges are always the right way to go, meaning they are superior when it comes to the longevity and health of the installation uh, of the installed door and frame. Plain bearing hinges, it would be an RCBB, uh, pardon me, an RC1741. Those knuckles just grind on each other. Um, that's going to be okay, it's going to work certainly, but I can assure you that 20 years later there's going to be substantial wear and tear on a hinge um, to the point I've even seen it, not quite 20 years, I've seen it after five uh, years of heavy use where the pair of doors, the coat closet that the family is into every single day, those doors are so severely leaning towards the center that they now make contact and it's simply because the grinding of the leaves against each other. They uh, make the margins between the hinge pad, the, the, the hinge knuckles so severe that the door hangs and it sags. I've seen a busy restaurant, the bathroom door, where they put plain bearing hinges on there and the door literally would no longer latch because it sunk too far for the latch to go into the strike. Ball bearing, while it is more expensive, is not noticeably more expensive given the fact that I've never seen a ball bearing hinge wear out um, in the sense of how a plain bearing hinge would wear out. So it's really easy money when it comes to figuring out what hinge you'd like to use. Uh, the 1741 means that this is a, uh, a hinge that is going to be a, a residential grade and this should be about 96 thousandths of an inch thick. Oh, forgive me, 085, 0.085. Yeah, my caliper tells me it's .086. So it's residential caliber, meaning the leaf is thin. It's the thin leaf. It's the residential thickness um, versus commercial weight, which would be closer to 123 thousandths, which you could buy a commercial weight hinge. It'd be an RCBB 1279. Uh, that's a pretty uncommon hinge, but nonetheless, you could certainly order it. A thicker hinge. Now, what makes this hinge... That RCBB1741 is also defined by the link to the template. And that template is going to allow you to review this hinge along all of its sister products, uh, different corner treatments, whether it be quarter inch radius, 5 eighths radius, or square. Uh, it is going to also act as a uh, template for the location of the screw holes as well. And you'll see from there how the, uh, or where the location of the screw holes line up. These locations, if uh, you are looking at a hinge with three holes per leaf, you've got a three and a half, three and a half. If you have four holes, then you probably have a, a four by four or a four and a half, four and a half, something of that nature. But the location of these holes is going to be considered quite standard in terms of their vertical center line from the top, from their, their well, their vertical center line from the edge, to each hole and then down from the top of the leaf as is expressed there. Well, in this case, from the center of the hole um, or bottom of the leaf. Uh, so if your pattern looks like this, half moon, some people call it, um, it's very likely this hinge is a perfect match. Although I would recommend that you certainly take time and measure those locations 
before you order them. Um, you want to be sure the holes are going to line up where you will put the screws if you're dealing with a new installation. But the rest of that information that's there on that template does indeed show lots of other hinges, but they're really only different in terms of how their corners are treated. Um, and that's really how the part number changes. Okay. Then there's a link below this video to a document called Product Catalog, I believe it's called. Indeed. That is going to show you all of the residential type hinges from Hager uh, spread throughout there. Hager has a really good broad offering of different hinge types that are going to have uh, particular hole locations. So you're going to visually match what you're looking at or looking for first and then read the detailed description. Obviously if you see BB, you know it stands for ball bearing. RC stands for radius corner. You'll see how they have some radius by square corner leaves things of that nature. Different base materials uh, are listed there as well. So pay attention to all of that. If you have an inch and three eighths door, three and a half, three and a half is the only size hinge to use. Four by four is too large. If you have an inch and three quarter thick door, the correct hinge is four, four by four or four and a half by four or four and a half, four and a half or five by four and a half. Three and a half, three and a half can be used, but it's not considered the correct hinge for that application. Now speaking of the size, it's important to note the height is the first dimension. This is a three and a half, three and a half, but we would say that's three and a half tall and then three and a half wide. So be mindful of that. That's how hinges are sized. The height is the first dimension, whereas in a door, the height is the second dimension. It's a bit confusing. The fact of the matter is be mindful of it because not every hinge is square. Um, three and a half by five, not uncommon. Uh, four by three and a half, not uncommon. Four and a half by four, you get the point. Rectangular hinges are really common. It's, it's important to know the height is the first dimension. Uh, now, uh, speaking of those holes, screws are included. They have, uh, they have these uh, flat head, these are called fly cut screws. There is a detail or a feature to the tip of the screw that helps you evacuate wood out um, without having to pre-drill the holes. I would not recommend that practice. I would certainly pre-drill the holes in all instances. I would never just drill right into a door in a frame. I have seen countless doors and frames split because of that practice. So be sure to pre-drill the hole. If you're dealing with a softwood, maybe go with about 80% of the root diameter of the screw itself. If you're going with a hardwood, maybe go just the root diameter of the, uh, of the screw itself. Um, now, there is extended description information down below that tells you the hinge is priced per hinge, and currently they have to be ordered in multiples of two. Hager at this time does not break a box, uh, so be sure to buy in multiples of two if you have you know, six, eight doors, you know, if you've got one door that you need three hinges, you'll have one left over, unfortunately. They give us the fact that it's full mortise. You can see from the swag on the hinge leaf here and here that the leaves, when brought parallel, they're meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and frame. If this was a full surface hinge, there would be no swag and it would literally lie flat on the table. This hinge won't lie flat naturally on the table. That's how we know. This pin is removable. You can drive that pin out. Should for some reason you want to do that, you can. Well, if you're pulling the door off the hinges to gain a small amount of additional space to move something through, completely reversible. You can use it for a left hand or a right hand door. That Hager logo is on there as well. Pin diameter 0.234 inch. Residential weight, ball bearing, six holes. Those screws are three quarter by nine. Available in obviously lots of finishes, your brasses, your bronze, your chromes. Hager's going to have every practical finish available on such a common ubiquitous hinge that you're going to see primarily in residential applications. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Hager products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Any questions on the Hager, this is their part number RCBB1741. Three and a half, three and a half, and a US 15 satin nickel finish, or any other Hager product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.